Hi, I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inner Arbor Solutions, and I'll be your moderator for today's panel examining Unix, a journey of innovation. We're here with a distinguished panel to look at the 20-year history of Unix and its standardization. So allow, allow me, please, to introduce our panel. We're here with Andrew Josie. He's the Director of Standards at the Open Group. We're also here with Darren Johnson, Director of Solaris Engineering at Oracle. Tom Matthews, Distinguished Engineer of Power Systems at IBM. And Jeff Kyle, Director of Mission Critical Solutions at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. It's not often that you get a 20 year anniversary in um, tech where the relevance is still so high and the prominence of the technology is still so wide. So let me uh, first address a question to Andrew Josie at the Open Group. How has that been able to maintain its relevance in such a dynamic world? Thank you, Dana. Um, uh, we saw efforts such as the IEEE POSIX, uh, then X Open, and later the Open Group was formed to sort of bring that all together when the different vendors realized the benefits of, of bringing um, the innovation sort of to, to become a common platform. All our companies provide cloud services, whether it's public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, and whether it's uh, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, or any of the other as a service um, options. And uh, the interesting thing is that to really be able to provide that consistency, that capability to our customers, we rely on a foundation, and that foundation is Unix. How is it that the common spec has been so instrumental in making this a powerful uh, underpinning for so much modern technology? Yeah, I think a solid foundation um, is built upon standards um, because we can have, like you mentioned, assurance. If you look at the certification process, there's more than 45,000 test cases that gives assurance to developers, to customers, that there's going to be determinism. And of anything, I mean, all the, the, the IT people that I've talked to, uh, deterministic behavior is so critical because when it's non-deterministic, things go wrong. Yeah, so if you look at the standard, it, it actually contains several components. And it's really modular in a way that, depending on your need, you can pick a piece of it and, and support that. Maybe you don't need a, a, the complete operating system for a highly scalable environment. Maybe you just need like a microcontroller. Well, you can pick the standard so there's consistency at that level. And then that feeds into, let's say, the development environment in which an engineer may be developing something on. And then that scales to, let's say, you know what, you need a lot of those services on a large data center. Well, you've still got that <clears throat> consisting through, throughout. And whether it's Solaris, AIX, HPUX, or even FreeBSD or Linux, there's a consistency because of those elements of the standard. Mm. Well, I think, as was said, for developers, it's the consistency that really matters. Unix standards develop and deliver consistency. This allows the developers to focus a lot more on interesting challenges and customer value at the application and user level. And in today's virtualized, cloud-ready world, that's critical. In the end, customers are still trying to do the same things that they always, always had. They're trying to use applications and technology to get data from one place to another and more effectively, efficiently use that data to make business decisions. That's happening more and more mobily, right? I think every HPUX, AIX, Solaris, Unix system out there is fully connected to a mobile world and the Internet of Things. We're actually securing it more than many customers realize. Mm. In addition to just running the business, things have to stay up, and, and it's been that way for a long time, 7 by 24 by 365. So, so uh, you know, these three elements, reliability and availability and scalability, they've been a big focus, and, and uh, a lot of that has been delivered through uh, the hardware environment, or uh, through the hardware environment, in addition to the standards. I, I think in the standards test suite right now, stable, you know, reliability, availability, uh, <clears throat> serviceability, and, and this investment protection element. Mm. But what any standard, whether it's Ethernet standard or, or Unix, it helps bring things together in a way that uh, you don't have to think about um, how to get data from one point to another. And, and, you know, mobility really is about moving data from one place to another in a 
quick fashion where you can do transactions in, in microseconds or milliseconds or seconds and you want some assurance that the data that you send from one place to another. But it's also about making sure, and, and this is a, a topic that's really important today, is security. And actually it was um, basically the Open, the open Group's members, so it was you know, Sun and IBM and HP, came to, to the Open Group at the time and said, look, we've got to go and talk to IEEE and we've got to talk to ISO about bringing all the experts together in a single place to do the standard. So starting in 1998, we met in Austin at the IBM facility, hence the name the Austin Group, and we started on that, on that road. So now today, uh, since then, we have we developed a single set of books, and then on the front cover we stamp the designation of it being an IEEE standard, an open group standard, and, and an international standard. So the technical folks, they only have to go to a single place, do the work once, and uh, then we put it through the adoption processes of the individual um, organizations. Common APIs, that's one <coughs> thing we've always wanted to do, is to look at raising that bar of common functionality. So, you know, Linux and uh, open source systems, you know, they, they very much are working with the standard as much as, as anybody else. And I think there's a couple key points. One is it, it's great that we have an organization, Open Group, that not only helps create the standard or manage the standard, but is also developing the test suites for certification. So it's one organization working with the community, Austin Group, and, and uh, of course, uh, IEEE and, and uh, the Open Group members, um, to create a, a test suite that allows us to, again, we've mentioned 45,000 tests, right? If any one of our organizations had to create or, or manage that separately, that's a huge expense. They do that for that. That's part of, part of the service. And they've evolved that, and it's grown. I don't know what it originally was, but I mean, 45,000 tests um, has grown, and they've made it more efficient in terms of the process. And it's a collaborative process. If we have issues, well, is it our issue? Is it the test suite issue? And there's great responsiveness. So, I mean, kudos to the Open Group because they kind of make it easy for us to certify. So, I think another element that's important on this cost point is is just, you know, back to the standards, uh, the cost of doing development, um, uh, uh, the cost of doing that. I mean, imagine a world, um, particularly being an ISV, a software ISV, um, imagine a world where, where there were no standards. And um, it, that world existed at one point in time. Now with the standards, of course, you know, ISV, you know, I write it for one platform, it's portable over to the other platform. Uh, um, so that that's been crucial, right? I mean, is is that the the standards is a, have actually encouraged encouraged innovation in the software industry because that be, just to, it made it easier for developers to to, to develop. Well, yeah, yeah, Stano. In our standards process, we you know we're very much you know able to take on almost any problem, but this would certainly be a very exciting problem for us to to look to tackle, to bring parties together. But that's one thing we were able to do is to bring different parties together, looking for, for that commonality to, um, you know, to, to, to try and um, you know, build the consensus. That's the one thing we do. We get people in the room, you know, people talk through the different points of view. Um, what the open group's able to do is to almost provide a safe harbor for there where, where the different vendors can come in and, and not be seen as talking in a anti-competitive position, but actually frankly discussing the differences in their implementations and deciding for you know what, what, what's the best common way to go forward with setting a standard. I think that true innovation um, can be best done on a foundation. And OpenStack, it's it's a number of communities that are loosely affiliated, um, delivering great progress, um, but. There's interoperability, there's uh, issues that, and it's not with intent, it's just people are moving fast. If some foundation elements can be built, that's great for them because then us as vendors can more easily support the solutions that these communities are bringing to us and then, then we can deliver to our customers. Now I know that uh, each of our companies will go to great lengths to, to make sure that their, our customers don't see that inconsistency. So we bear the burden for that, but what if we could spend more time helping the communities be more successful rather than, as I mentioned before, reinventing the wheel? But I think Unix can present that secure, reliable, 
foundation to a hybrid cloud environment for customers. I mean, we've got IBM, HP, Oracle sitting here, and I'll say virtually Linux, other communities that are participating, coming to a mutual agreement saying this is what we believe is best. And you know what? It's open to disagreement. Uh, you can have a open dialogue uh, in which anybody's invited, in the case of the Austin Group, it's everybody. Uh, actually, in, in case of any of the efforts around Unix, it's an open process, it's open involvement, and it, in, in the case of the open group, again, another open, it's, it's vendor neutral. So their goal is to find a vendor neutral solution. And I think that the, the foundation of, of Unix, even going back to the original development, but, but certainly uh, since standards came about, is the one word, open. Well, great. Uh, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. I'd like to thank our panelists today for joining this discussion about the uh, enabling innovation through Unix on its 20th anniversary. Uh, congratulations to the Open Group and to the Unix community for that. And um, also look for more information on Unix uh, at the various sites on the Open Group. They have many landing pages for work that's progressing uh, still. And um, thank you all for your attention and input. Thanks, Dana. Thank you very much. Cheers.